I'm Ron Fox. Welcome to my videos with Wielden Tool Company. Today I shall be using the corner lock cutter to make a drawer. This is an extremely useful cutter as it not only makes all four corners of the drawer, both front and back, but it grooves the sides to take the bottom of the drawer and also bevels the edge of the bottom to slide into the groove made in the side. So the one cutter does the whole thing after the wood has been prepared. This is the cutter in question. It's the smallest one of three in the Wielden range. It has a maximum diameter of 25 millimeters and it's on a quarter inch shank. This means that it does not require a heavy duty half inch powerful router, medium or even a light quarter inch router will be adequate. It needs a table, it's a table job making drawers, but not a very big table. Having put the cutter in the table, I open the cheeks of the table fence and before using the cutter I'm going to fit a zero clearance auxiliary fence to my table fence. This is simply a piece of MDF with a cut in the bottom that just lets the cutter through and the object of that is to support the work right up to the cutter and pick it up again immediately on the other side but also when we take a piece of board and take it vertically past the cutter as we will be the unbroken length of the MDF gives us support all the way across whereas any gap in your table fence could possibly cause you to snag as you go across. We put this on the tape is straightforward double-sided carpet tape from your do-it-yourself store. Most of these tapes are pressure sensitive so if you can get a clamp on there to give them a good squeeze it will help the addition. Before we start to make the settings, with the zero clearance fence taped to the table fence, I'm going to switch the router on and pull the fence forward gently over the cutter to let the cutter cut its own way through the fence. <laughs> That ensures the, the zero clearance part of it because the cutter is cutting its own way through. This is a standard procedure for making zero clearance fences but if you've got a much bigger cutter than this you can always rough cut the bulk of the material first before you pull the fence through the cutter. With the cutter in the table and the zero clearance fence fitted to the table fence we now set the height of the cut to make our first test cut. I'm going to set it at about 10 millimeters. This will be very close to the final height, but we'll confirm this with the test cut. And to set it, I've got a useful little gadget here, which enables you to set both the cutter, not only in a table, but in a handheld router, and also, as we shall see, the fence itself. As you can see this is a stirrup with a short length of ruler in it which is calibrated in both metric and inches and if we want a 10 millimeter cut all we do is to set 10 millimeters level with the top of the gauge and flick this little switch to lock it in place and if that sticks up 10 millimeters there We've got the corresponding 10 millimetres across the gap in the bottom there. So I can now place this over the cutter and I get that to my satisfaction. Remembering to lock the plunge after I've done that and we're ready to make our first test cut. To do this we lock the fence and we can bring it forward so we're going to take two boards and make a test cut. We've got the fence set back a few millimetres from the fully 
deflected cutter. Remember we're doing the height of cut, we're not talking about the position of the fence at the moment. And I'm going to take each piece vertically past the cutter. Now in order to help me do this and control the work, I've got a very simple little work aid that you'll find on the hints and tips section. This enables me to push or pull, depending on where you're standing, the workpiece past the cutter, protecting my hands and holding the work quite firmly. I then do the same with the second piece of scrap board. Well there's my first test cut and it's very slightly loose which indicates that the cutter is very slightly too low. So I release the plunge and I wind up the cutter a whisker more to make the next test cut. Now we see we've got a much better fit and now we see that although we've just got a couple of bits of scrap that have been cut about we have got a better fit. Right that's the cutter set I have checked underneath here that I've locked the plunge on the router. When we have set the depth of cut or the height of cut we then move the fence back to cut the sides and this is a, a shallow cut and the position of the fence is given by lining up the smaller diameter the bit under there with the front of the fence so we use a straight edge I'm going to be bringing up the fence with the straight edge across uh, it's underneath that tooth it's on the smaller diameter of the cutter recap cutter height is set and established by test cuts the position of the fence is set so that it is exactly in line with the smaller diameter of the cutter that is the position for the draw sides. For the draw front and back, we will alter the position of the fence, but not the position of the height of cut. We're going to make the front and the back of the draw now. The wood for this is passed horizontally, flat on the table past the cutter and the fence needs resetting what we have to do is to set it back so that when we look at it with the cutter rotated so that the blade is in its furthermost forward position that fence has to be back by the thickness of the draw side. Now the easiest way of doing that is simply to use the draw side and position the fence so that the front of that board is exactly flush with the front of the cutter. So now we're going to take the front and back of our drawer and we're going to take them past the cutter keeping them at right angles to the fence but I've said that I never use a mitre fence for this what I'm going to use is this little push block which is simply a piece of MDF happens to be 18 millimeters thick check that you've got a pro proper perfect right angle there 
And if you want to make it fancy, you can put a handle on it. I copied that handle from a smoothing plane. The extra touch I've given it though is to put a groove across there, which I did with a quarter inch Wielden slotter. And with the same slotter, I put a corresponding tongue on a piece of batten. And the idea of that is that if you press that in there, you've got your breakout prevention without needing your third hand because you're usually told to put a scrap between the board that you're pushing and your push block. Well, it's built in there and when we have made our cuts, we can just cut that off and it's ready for the next cutter. So you start off with a long length and it's only standard batten and you simply work your way along it then make another piece. So we're going to make this cut keeping the workpiece at right angles to the fence and minimizing breakout by using this push block with the built-in breakout piece on it. Here we go. And there's the cut with whiskers that we will remove afterwards. Now do the other end and then repeat for the front of the drawer. And there we have the front of the drawer with just a little bit for sanding off to finish. The next step is to put the groove in all four sides to take the bottom of the drawer. For this we return the fence to the same position as when we were cutting the earlier pieces. Now it would occur to you that we could have put the grooves for the bottom in at the time but it seemed more logical to go through the production of all four drawer sides before putting the bottom groove in. So there we are with our four drawer sides ready to go together after cleaning up the cuts. One thing left for us to do now is to prepare the bottom of the drawer. I've cut the piece ready. I'm using MDF 6mm thick. Now our final step with the router is to put the edge on the bottom of the box which we do with the cutter in the same place, same height, fence back into its forward position and we're going to create a beveled edge on the bottom of the box that will fit exactly into the cut we've made or the groove that we've made along all four sides of the box. We clean up all four sides. We can then assemble our drawer, glue and clamp. And if I switch to the proverbial one I made earlier, here, this is slightly larger than the one I've just been making, but here is a completed drawer. So that shows the versatility and the ease and quickness of using this little lock corner cutter to make your drawers and boxes. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you for the next one.